Hello, welcome to another cooking show with the Tater Cowgirls. I have a lot of projects for you today. The first one is we are making German pretzels and of course you get some historic background as well. This is a German pretzel on Eddie's sweater. It's it Child like of the Alps, Alpenkind is her, I bought that for her in Germany. <laughs> So pretzels are, uh, and I told you that when I made the soles, the Swabian soles, um, German uh, pretzels are Swabian so-called gebilt bread, which means symbolized bread. And of course I researched for you what, where it comes from. Um, uh, they say um, uh, the history of science and technology by uh, Brian, Bunk and Alex Hellemans, I hope, Alexander Hellemans, I hope I, I spell it right or I pronounce it right. Uh, they say that uh, in the early Middle Ages, pretzels were probably um, invented by monks. And the twisted knot in the middle is um, uh, what, uh, you know, is the, the main uh, feature of a pretzel. And they uh, invented it to uh, reward children who uh, knew their prayers. And the original name of the pretzel was uh, the, the, Latin, the Latin word pretola. Pretiola. Yeah, pretiola. And all the Latin students here know what it means. Thank God I have now a reason I see the reason why I studied seven years of Latin in high school to tell you what pretiola means. It means little rewards and uh, pretiola turned into pretzel. So uh, this is the background, uh, symbolized, symbolized uh, bakery items means they never lose their shape, they always look the same and uh, they always taste kind of the same, they are not getting in different uh, Variations. Also, I see pretzels in different variations. So, but the original one is always the same. So now let's get started with, with uh, baking a making a pretzel, and uh, let's get that down a little bit, and the, that you see what we do. Am I going to learn how to make a pretzel shape today? Yeah. Yay! You make the pretzel shape. All right. You see what I'm doing? Yep, here is the music. Okay, so we need, first we have to make the dough, we need the dry ingredients, which is three, um, two cups of whole wheat pastry flour. Here's the cup. Two cups of whole wheat pastry flour. Flour. If you do not have oat flour, just put half a cup in a coffee grinder and grind the rolled oats, you know, and then you have oat this flour. Is a cup. This is half a yeah. cup. Yeah, thank you. You want to put it in? Yes, let me just put this in. You want to put it in? Yeah, not too much. Half a cup. We make, uh, this is the measurement, and I put it underneath my, my video for you as a recipe. This is the measurement for six pretzels. Hold on, hold on. I don't want to get too much in. Hold on. I cannot pour it. It's so hard yeah, to it's pour. Uh, okay, better this way. All right. Half a cup. Let's put that in. Put that on the side. Then we need um, two teaspoons of sugar or syrup. Either way, if you're more comfortable with uh, maple syrup, Two I do teaspoons. not like the taste of maple syrup in my pretzels. I use uh, sugar. Tablespoon, tablespoon, tablespoon. They can't find teaspoon. Here. Oh wait. 
This is the tablespoon. This is two tablespoons. I thought it said two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I can use the two tablespoons. <laughs> Good idea! I thought I said teaspoon. I'm like, what? Alright. Got that one in. And, uh, yes, I need a wooden spoon to something. Or something. Something. That will, that will work because we have to knead it later. Okay, and then we need the yeast. I use that uh, dry uh, yeast. Cut that open, I don't want to break it open. It um, should be a teaspoon dry yeast. So it, it's a package, you know, just use a package of rapid dry yeast that will work. And you know, there is not much to good bread. Um, if you go in the supermarket, look for bread. If you are on a whole plant-based diet, on a starch-based diet, look for bread that does not have oil in it. The best breads are only made yeast, flour, uh, salt, and water. You don't need any other thing to make a good bread. That's what a baker once said to me long before I went on a whole plant-based diet. Oil is just clogging up your, your system. All right, so we have that. Now we need a three quarter three warm, warm water. three quarter warm water. Three quarter warm water. But yeast. With yeast, you don't work with a uh, cold ingredient. Ah, that thing has no quarter. Interesting. And the what? No quarter measurement. Oh. This is a quarter. Okay, cup. Well, that's the one. Here we are. I'm surprised it doesn't have a quarter because that's yeah. in the cooking contest. Yeah. It's odd. Okay, here are three quarters. Three quarter of water. And I think we have done the rest. Baking, you also need baking soda for later, so keep it handy. The, we, I will show you for what um, later on. Now we put the warm water. Let me stir it. Into the, we want to stir it slowly because it's still, you know, um, very powdery. Just mix it a little. All right. Okie dokie. I will have a lot of stuff for you today. Um, I got a lot of requests per email to show what I eat on a normal typical day. I want to talk about that and show you some stuff. And also some real easy stuff to take to work because I, you know, I work uh, in Cupertino and uh, have to take my lunch with me and also my breakfast by the way because I go early to work. Um, I carpool with my husband and then I go to the gym at the college where I work and then uh, after that I eat my breakfast at the work and then I go to work. So I'm on the road at uh, five o'clock, <laughs> you can't imagine, in Silicon Valley, beautiful traffic. Okay, that's enough. Can't move the spoon yeah. anymore. <laughs> what we do now is uh, we just knead it together. So what? let me get this done. So it's kind of like slime because you need to stir it. And then yeah, it's it. like slime. <laughs> Your slime creations, yeah. And it has to become an elastic dough. Because um, if you use bread dough, you can do that. Bread flour, uh, bread flour always adds to the elasticity. I do like pastry flour, whole wheat pastry flour for the pretzels, but it's not really an, you know, whatever flour you have handy, you can try it out and whatever li you like, use it. So, but you want to have it nice and incorporated. You don't want to have. Uh, have it not in, not mixed enough. Okay, so can you put? Yeah, that's okay. Can you put some flour on my on my thing here? Sure. Where's the flour? Oh, 
flour is on the other side. Just the flour. Yeah. So just put a little bit here. All right, and put a little bit in the bowl. Okay. Yeah, now it, see how elastic it gets? So this is like Play-Doh now, the Play-Doh consistency that I would say. Then you have it right. So, and now you make, you want to do it too. We have to make three, uh, six, you make three out of that. Three. And I make three, uh, give me a little bit of that. <laughs> so you make three out of that. Mm -hmm. And I make three out of that little, um, little, little uh, balls. Oh, wow. One. Don't 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 wallow it too much. So okay. yeah. one, two, three. See like this. Then we make little balls. Put it back in. In the. Do you see? Or yeah, you see it. Okay, we put it back in the bowl. Put a little flour in the bowl that they don't stick. I have, we have flour in the bowl. You already did it, so it's fine. Like, so I make like three, food. make three. I might be a little small there, one, no? Oh, that's okay. You can make a smaller one. It's not a big deal. So I get a towel. I get a towel. You got it? No, I have one more. Okay, one more. Two. No, this one I have. Mm -hmm. Right here. All right. So we have six. You put the towel on top. What I usually do, I put it somewhere close to the oven, which I have uh, turned on to 400 degrees. Like here. Don't put it in the oven. Don't put it in the refrigerator. Just in a warm location okay because the yeast the dough has to rise for let's say about um 20 minutes i would say and uh, uh, then we come back to it um in the meantime i show you i want to show you a little bit what i eat because i this is a good time to to show you that Okay, let's get you up a little. Hello. <laughs> okay, so here is my my prepper box <laughs> from the McDougal, uh, which I bought all the McDougal stuff. So I have. Um, let's start. Let's start, uh, no, let's forget the McDougal box, start with the breakfast, what I do for breakfast, I show you. I'm not making it now because I have already had breakfast. I show you, oops, I have dough on my hands. Yucky doodle. Okay. I usually take to work one of these Tupperwares or whatever you call it. I like the stainless steel for my for my breakfast. Um, I start with raw oats, kind of like you know, pretty good measurement. This raw oats are mixed is a Swiss muesli. Uh, it's mixed with some some raisins. You don't have to you know, if you have only raw oats. You take raw oats. Raw oats is oats is better for weight loss because. Raising anything <laughs> is adding to your little package you eat. Okay, I want it because um, I like it in the flavor, but it's not a must. What I add to it is one banana. I cut them in in little slices, and I add um, berries. It doesn't matter which one. I usually I like. Uh, fresh blueberries like this not too many this is my fruit serving usually for the day um, sometimes I have an apple for lunch too but uh, this is all what I eat on fruit a banana in 
some cinnamon and then uh, I have that because I'm not so hip on uh, soy milk or plant milk in my oats I use um, this one Kite Hill plain unsweetened almond yogurt and I like that and this is about two cups I never use more than a quarter cup so I, I divided that by four it's quarter to a half cup it's two cups yeah half cup usually less than a half cup just to make it moist you know to make this moist in there and the banana is already in there I do not mix it until I go to work at work when I eat breakfast I start mixing it up this is my breakfast I eat that every damn day <laughs> sorry shouldn't say that. I eat that every day I'm not using bad words so we cut that out cut it out cut it out and um, this is my favorite breakfast so I don't miss uh, pancakes or anything I'm never was a big pancake eater sometimes I make pancakes on the weekend when we all have the same breakfast but this is my one to take to work so now you know that um, for lunch <laughs> for lunch um, I like uh, now we are back on the now I like now we are back with the prepper box and before you start laughing I live in California and if you live in California and you don't have some food storage at home to prepare for the big earthquake you are out of your mind so this is one of my my emergency food storage too but I also use yeah. it I bought it to, and if I go on a trip I take it with me because I never know if I get vegan whole plant-based food everywhere a worst case scenario I get some more hot water and pour it in my uh, soups so the the McDougal's is miso soup, it's uh, chicken flavor, they have all kinds of tortilla soup, all kinds of stuff. They also have little packages with soup and uh, vegetables. Uh, they have a minestrone like that, which is really good. But those you can take in the, in the airplane. So if you travel, those you can take in your luggage because they have no, no liquid in it. And I show you how they look inside. So what you do is you it's open like it chicken noodle soup. and there is a package in there See this is like dried chicken like the meat the ramen soups yes. You put the, the spices in there you fill it up There's a little mark fill it up with water put it in the microwave for three minutes it's, And then you have it. I know how it's different from ramen. You can't put ramen in the microwave and you can't and there's no spice. Yeah so the other thing I love on McDougal, this is what I currently eat for work at lunch. I love, I love, I love these uh, quinoa salads. This is pistachio citrus. It's one of my favorite ones. I have a black bean, and I also they, I, I ordered the mixed, you know, um, the mixed box where you have different flavors. Tons of them actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just wanted to show you the other one. Pistachio. Um, I don't have fun anymore but here's a lentil and then I also have a sweet potato which I really really like so this this is uh, what I eat for for uh, lunch and I, let's make one pistachio so again you open that cup and you find the quinoa and some plastic so I turn take the plastic off mm, take the little delicious. bag out put the spices in. I make that because I haven't had lunch, so this is, will be my lunch, and I show you what I prepare for work. So this uh, is the, the little cup I take to work. So we fill it up with water. There's a marker in there, and I usually I do put more water in than they mark up. When I tell you why later. Okay. So you fill it up with water. You put it two minutes in the microwave which 
we do. And then what I do for for my lunch, and don't don't get a shock if you see how much I eat for lunch. <laughs> oh, hold on. The, the lid you put on when you put it in the microwave. Okay, just loose, loosely put the lid on. You just so and while I wait for my quinoa salad, I show you where I, where it gets in. So in the morning I prepare a bowl of salad like this and whatever I have at hand. I like to do, do greens like these baby kale. I love baby kale. I don't like the big one that much, but the baby kale I really like. Um, I put also in two slices of lemon because uh, at, lo at work, at lunch, I squeeze those out then. I can do this right now. So I go ahead and squeeze the, the lemon in when I'm at work, when I'm preparing for lunch. While I wait for my quinoa, I have a microwave at work. So I, in the morning I cut in a pile of jicama in that one, radishes, cucumber, a pepper, a bell pepper, a, a tomato, half a tomato, uh, spring onions. I have some basil uh, in and some parsley. So try to get some greens and greens is uh, the vitamins. And right now in spring, I feel like uh, I want vitamins for lunch. In winter, I more took soups, McDougal soups and a sandwich with hummus on it, oil free. I do that too. Um, but uh, right now I'm really on hooked on salads. Uh, what I ha I can use half an avocado a week because avocado has a lot of fat, so I try to limit that to half an avocado a week. So I would put like a quarter in in a salad like that if I want it today. I don't want it. I usually put mango. Or very often I, and I use mango, especially with the citrus flavor I have in the microwave. Oh, there you go. And today I have left a little mango salsa, which I bought at Whole Foods Fresh. So I'm pouring that in. It looks delicious. Yeah. See? I even can get a 11 year old excited <laughs> for a salad. Yay! And. Uh, my quinoa. It spilled everywhere, did it? No. Good. no. So we um, we let it sit a little bit. I, as I said, I had more water in, but if you only eat that quinoa, you, you don't put that much water in, but I like it with more water. So first of all, I, I um, mix that all. You want to see how I cut mango? This is really so easy. Much. Mango has like a tongue-shaped, um, tongue-shaped uh, seed in it. Uh, the Esselstein, Anne Esselstein and her daughter uh, have a video on that. They, they really dis describe it. This is how I learned how to cut a mango. So you go alongside that tongue-shaped thing. What you do is you make little squares, cut them out, then, oh my God. then dump them outside like this yes. and then you can put them really easy in the in the salad without making it too, too much dirt which you don't want to do in the office, at least I don't. <laughs> and uh, this is it. So I put a little bit in there, I don't need more because I have the mango salsa. Okay, so the reason why I put more water in there, because I want the spices in there, is like my salad dressing, you know, so the quinoa is in there. So we pour the whole thing over it. it makes it a little warm, which is really good. Then we just toss it. There's no salt, no, no nothing in there. Just lemon juice. Um, you could do a little balsamico, you know, take it with you. Uh, to work or have a little bottle at work in the refrigerator. Mm, good. Very good. That's the. 
pistachio citrus. You could do some pinolas, you know, pour in some pinolas. Not too much, again, as contains fat. So Dr. McDougall recommends not to use seeds and nuts if you have to lose weight or like me, have um, diabetes in remission until you have your goal weight. And this is my lunch. See, just look at this big bowl. I'm not leaving the table hungry. I'm eating healthy food and that will do it for me until I go home. Um, you wanna try? I know you're dying to try. <laughs> Some people will need more salt. I keep it with Dr. McDougall. If you need a little bit salt in it to make it more tasty for you, do it because you rather have salt in healthy food than eating saltless and uh, have unhealthy stuff in it. It's good, huh? Yeah. This is my lunch. I, I put it in here. I can eat it later. This is not going bad for a while. You want to eat more? So I put it in the refrigerator. Um, I have usually have a glass of tea with it at work and then in the evening in the evening I have you know you see all my my video recipes uh, on, my, on our channel you can look it up this is what I usually eat in the evening today we have um, uh, black bean enchiladas I buy those I do not like cans I try to avoid uh, um, aluminum cans as much as I can so I found those and uh, I will keep using those uh, I make black bean enchiladas I have um, fat free tortillas I found those so you have to look again on the ingredients not to have not to get those with oil and then uh, these I want to show you these are, would be a sandwich I would use at work if I don't have a salad. It's like a pocket, oh, uh, Ezekiel 4-9 pockets. I like those if I don't use bread because you, you can uh, save a few calories. But uh, that's about it. I keep it really simple. Don't overthink it. Eat what you like. Uh, plan your meals for the day then that you're not running out. If you run out, Make sure you have a McDougal soup at home because that's my emergency. That's where I go to if I have nothing at home, if I didn't plan anything, if I'm sick, don't want to cook. That's where I go yeah. to. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's probably the, the enchiladas I will put uh, separately on my YouTube. Um, I will film it at some point. Uh, you all know enchiladas and uh, you will see. <laughs> They're good. Um, that's it. This is my my um, my go-to meals. And now um, I see you again when the when the pretzels are ready to go, and then we go from there. Okay. See you soon. Hello, we are back. So um, this is my bowl. It has risen, so they're looking good. Those six little balls we put in, and. Uh, I put you down that you see what I do. I put some, some flour on it. Yeah? Sunflower. No, some flour. Oh, like sunflower. <laughs> oh, you want to tell what you plant? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm pl at home, we're planting corn and radishes, and we're. In our garden. In our garden. <laughs> so we uh, Eddie planted corn and radishes, and she's very impatiently waiting for it to, <laughs> to come out of the dirt. All right, so I show you, you can do one too, okay? okay I don't know. You might want to put your, oops, you, you might want to put your um, your hands a little bit with, with flour. Okay, what we do is we take one ball and roll it. I usually like it, do it like this. Just roll it. Okay, not too small. Another good roller, as you can see. I'm not either. I'm not alone. <laughs> the bakers do it like this. 
but I, <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. Okay, a little, make it a little bit more. Because you want it round. Okay. Like this. Oh, that's how you make a pretzel. This that's is how a pretzel is made. They make, they cartoons make it look so hard. And uh, I have a, I have a, a joke. You know, uh, Austrians. Let me see this. Austrians and Germans. They have like a friendly. How can I call it? A, a friendly rivalry, like USA and Canada. And the running joke is, why do Austrians not like to eat pretzels? Because they can't untie the knot. Okay, my Austrian friends, I'm sorry I had to tell it. I don't uh, get it. I don't get it. <laughs> okay, it's okay. So we take the pretzel. Yep. Oh, hold on. We have to show them. So you, you have to... Let me put it down. Here. So you, you have to, to make put it here. I usually put it a little bit over it so that the pretzel stays. You see that? Mm. Okay. And then you take the. You, you, we need two tablespoons of baking soda. In now we get the baking soda in, in, in the game. Uh, in boiling water. Two tablespoons of tape, baking soda in boiling water. Oops. Oh wow, bubbly. Yeah, it's chemistry here. It's chemistry lesson. <laughs> okay. And we let it boil. Put baking soda in water. Is it actually for baking? And we put it on. Well, it well, maybe I can. It's too small actually that. Oh, I destroyed it now. So don't make too much flour on it. I think I put too much flour on it. Okay. I think you put too much flour on yeah. your hands. Yeah, exactly. Got to dry. But it's okay. We do it anyway. So I have the, the pretzel. Like here. Like so. Okay. And I put it... How can I do it as you see? Can you see my boiling water? Let's see. Yeah, I think you see it. Yeah. So I take the pretzel for 10 seconds, about 10 seconds in the boiling water with the baking soda. This makes that brown uh, crust on top of it. Oh, God. Oops. Don't burn yourself. Okay. So I have to take it out with something. That I thought that, that one, I thought that one would be good, but it's too small, so. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> enough yeah okay. um, looks like that when I take it out it got a little bit bigger I put it on my silicon mat you see that yeah you see it kind of <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. put it a little bit over here okay I put it on it this is where they will bake and we put a little salt on it so my Delicious. Uh, or pinolas it's the same thing. So, pinolas or salt, that's what I usually put on. You can do whatever you want to put on at this point. Uh, I don't do too much salt. I don't want to have these big salt pretzels you, you know from the bakeries in Germany. I just do a little bit. And a few pinolas. You want to try one, Eddie, to make one? Yeah. Mm. Okay. I don't want to take it out of the bowl. Roll it. I stop. I can do one here. I have one. Oh. You need flour. Go down. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So I'm making one. Huh? Yeah, that one goes better. I had too much flour on my hand, so don't make it too dry. See? Oh, that was much better. Much better. I don't know if I put too much flour. See? This is how... Oh, I want to show you. This is what the bakers do to get it longer. They just swing it back and throw. And now it worked. Yeah. Okay, I think I got it. Oh, 
I got another one. I put it on my thing and put it in the water, in the baking soda water. One, so I leave it on the thing and just let it swim a little. How did you... I need it longer. take them out of the water so that the salt glues on the on the pretzel. I think I put too Jonas? much flour on my hands. It's kind of dry. Huh? I think I put too much flour. Let me see. No, that looks good. I can't. Looking good. The little pretzel, that's fine. Small. We'll go up a little. Germany um, they make a little uh, how do I show you that uh, you can bring the camera over there no. okay never mind the ugly pretzel here in the middle this was my first one look this one here the, in Germany they put a little on the belly to make a little cut and I want to make to this too where it opens up a little. Oh. I know. I don't know why, but they do it. So I do it too. It's like a built bakery, so we are not gonna change it. Okay, next one. Next one. Yeah, it goes better without flour on the hand, I have to say. This is how you get it longer. Oh. I made a long one. Literally. All right, cool. <laughs> cool. Oh, here's one, okay. You forgot your own? Oh, it was my one? Yeah. Okay, here, another one. I finished. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30. That's 10 minutes, uh, 10 seconds, right? Yeah. It becomes 20 and 30. 
had a lot of water in that yeah, one. I let it, I let it, um, uh, alright. One more, right? Yeah, one over there. Mm -hmm. That's probably one. Okay. That's a really dry pretzel. <laughs> the first one. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, very pretty. Yeah. Eddie's last pretzel, very pretty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 6, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30. Okay, 10 minutes or 10 seconds. Why keep you saying 10 minutes? Because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay, let the water rinse out. Make He's rolling out some extra dough. Cut. Okay, and now they go in at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And then I talk to you again, and then you will see the it's pretzels. The tiny pretzels. And here are they are, our pretzels. Look how brown and nice they are. And of course, we will try one. Uh, you want one? I had them. Look at this. I had them on the on the silicon mat, so I don't need fat or anything. I don't need to grease anything. They got really nice. And of course, we try one. You want that? It's really hot. You want it on a plate? And in Germany, they put butter on it. Of course, we don't do that. The one thing I have, I want to show you this, but um, I can't do it, but if my family wants to do it, um, I have Miyoko's cultured vegan butter from Trader Joe's, and if you put a little bit on the pretzel, it's really good, but I don't, I, I do, I put hummus on it, um, that is good, and now we have our lunchy, let, let me try, you want to try too? Mm. See, they're fluffy inside. Really nice, huh? Like real pretzels. Hmm? They look like real pretzels. Mm -hmm. Tastes like real pretzels. Tastes like real pretzels. Um, have a good rest of the weekend. I'm here, Eddie and I. Pretzel kind and I. We cook for you again next week, next Sunday. Bye. This is in California. Peace out. Pow.